How are we doing, everyone? Matt Scott here. Mm. Sometimes you just need a sandwich, you know? There's not enough time in the day for all the sandwiches I want to eat. <clears throat> uh, sitting here in the yurt, Northeast Kingdom of Vermont, looking at all of the delicious work I have coming up, all these projects. And uh, it occurs to me that there is a bit of novelty and curiosity around what Kim and I are doing right now in terms of how we're making work work for us and what the day-to-day -day is like. And how do you get employable when you're a reckless transient in your late 30s? Big questions. Um, most pressingly, though, and to the point of this video, I want to talk a little bit about kind of an overview of plugins that I'm favoring right now really boring content unless you're into being bored probably go somewhere else but I want to unpack the plugins I'm using right now when I'm operating outside of the Apollo Universal Audio universe um, I do have some of the spark plugins they offer with or is it UAD spark it's like a subscription program because I own so many UAD softwares when they launch a subscription program, if you'd already paid for the software, they give you the subscription. But then you still have to be online in order to use them. And I don't always want to be online on my laptop in the year where I don't have power. Got to conserve those batteries. So always on the quest for plugins that require nothing other than native CPU usage to make the most of. So I thought I'd give you a little tour. Um, loading the session, something IME and I started working on a month ago. Probably future Jade Relics shit that'll sound nothing like this, but... Um, so real quick, I've already got some of these plugins loaded. And I'll ditch the ones I don't need. Um, EQ. Can't have enough of them. They're the fundamental ingredient in all audio work. Subtractive and additive EQ filters the ability to pick parts of the sound out and boost or reduce them because they bug the shit out of you and make the song sound worse. So helpful. Um, so these are five EQs I use a lot that require nothing other than my computer, and they probably have lent themselves in some capacity to the sound that you hear on my mixes. Obviously, necessarily, Pro-Q. Do I even have to tell you anything more? You probably already have it. Um, and if you don't, pardon me for assuming, but this would be an EQ worthy of your time. Does it have a color? I would argue yes, but a color that works with everything and is pretty damn transparent. Um, kind of as many bands as you can double-click will occur. Each one has a wide filter range you can address and make use of. Each band can be edited or equalized in mid-side, stereo, or left-right. So if you just want to clean the mids up in the center of your stereo position, you can do that with this pretty flawlessly. Um, dynamic EQ. So set a threshold for at what point the EQ is going to kick in and start to do work for you and just let it go into the sunset because you don't feel like automating everything or just because you like it you like the control that it adds it does that too um, it can listen to a track and create an EQ curve that you can then apply elsewhere so for like modeling EQ sounds it'll do that for you um, polarity inversion I mean uh, it does everything what more can I say? Go get it. Like, try it out. I think you can at least, there's like a two-week demo or something with all Fab filter products, and I would strongly advise you take it for a test rip. There's a reason why everyone has Pro-Q. I use it on every session, almost. I mean, it's probably my first EQ, even before I use an EQ. You know what I mean? Like, it's that integral. Like, this is my shaping EQ before I'll even send it to something that has more tone or depth or character or it sounds pissy and I like it. You know what I mean? This is the place to start, a foundational plugin. 
Um, just going down the line, use this guy fairly regularly. I forget what it's modeled after. It works fabulously, and it couldn't be more simple. Sweepable midsection, low, high, and a drive. The drive really, I mean, it just it kind of explodes your track um, and can really exaggerate in a sweet way whatever it is you're doing here. Um, I will use this subtractively, but it's usually additive. I like what it does so much to the quality of a sound. I see no reason not to employ it. So I really, I really tend to. This is more of like I want more highs. I want a little mid punch. The lows need more definition. Um, the lows are rounder, less punchy. I will say that from my experience. But it sounds so good. You could frankly crank everything, and as long as you're smart with your gain staging, probably make a case for doing that. Um, and the drive will kick your ass. It's really smooth but it does exactly what it's supposed to your transients pop uh, a lot of harmonics it's it's a lot of depth but very unique sounding too so cq kind of a want more of a vintage punch um, i'll use this on cymbals or even hi-hats a lot too i think there's something about this section right here specifically where you can really do some nice detail work it almost it's almost treating it more like a ribbon microphone would in a way um, if i was to make the comparison about outboard gear um, kind of a non-linear way of saying it, but I think you know what I mean. Um, a freebie. Uh, this guy, pretty dope. Brainworks BX Subfilter. I think it was free through Pro Tools or something. Um, couldn't be more simple. Again, what it does is it creates harmonics, and it's an exciter, and it adds you know more beef to your low end or at more depth to your sub work of an 808, whatever. Um, and you pick the resonance uh, and, and how like exaggerated it is, you'll use the gain in and out a lot. It is very easy to uh, find yourself in clipping territory. Uh, and not that it's always a bad thing. I think it can be pretty musical and not like you can't also adjust it on your fader, but um, it happens quick. So absolutely essential that they have the gain input and the gain output because um, you'll run into issues immediately. You'll just want to keep pushing it basically. Um, and you may find the sound that suits you is the one that really is pretty jacked. So, uh, moving up the list, Maggie Q. Um, this was another plug and alliance one. I think it was also a freebie. Uh, couldn't be more simple. You really only have control over two bands simultaneously, but they're hyper musical. And the lower band actually can split out. So, if you're looking at this indicator with this fake dip switch here, there's a red section and a white section. White indicates this frequency ranges from sub to 1.4K. Switch over to red, and you now have control from 40 to 1K. Um, so some slight variation from each other, but really between those two, 40, 57, 60, 88, 150, 220, 250, 400, 1K, 1 1.4, that's a lot of muscle. Um, and to my ear, honestly, while the bell shape is centered around 220 i mean it's i'm sure if we pulled it up on a graph we'd see um it's a little wider than that and it's but it's really smooth sounding um the thing people know this most for probably i mean the maggie cues have a great reputation in general for everything uh including mastering but is this 10 hertz band on the maggie Q? it's just really sweet it has a way of bringing out presence and evenness in your top end in a way that's almost never harsh but if you ever just you know what would it be like if it was just a little had a little more brightness to it or a little more clarity a little more focus um i'll use this all the time uh i mean on every uh, everything uh, it's kind of a go-to at this point um i favor real i really do favor this 10 band almost over anything else and i'll we'll get to that in the next eq um but it has a color that is both indistinguishable but very unique and what a cool thing to have um, so that gets a ton of use. Last but not least, this is more of a, a Swiss Army knife plug-in. However, uh, it's dope, and it's a lot of fun to use, and I'm getting to know it better every day. Um, the EQ strip in the SSL 9000J console emulation, also plug-in alliance. It's like 20 bucks. Uh, kick ass. Now, I have personally never had the luxury of working on an SSL um, I've read a lot about it. I've done like the things where you can just, you know, every track, some through SSL, so you can hear the before and after of my pithy acoustic guitar. Like, I've listened to all that shit. I like the sound of the SSL. I know uh, 
I know I like a lot of the music mix engineers have produced, either recorded or mixed through it. So EQ is a no-brainer. Um, this is also a Mondo EQ that is hellaciously musical. Um, anything from 1.5 to 22, so slightly above the range of what we perceive human hearing to be, can exist either as a bell or a, a shelf. Um, high mid frequencies from 2.5 to 7, again, that's pretty wide as the threshold goes. Um, low mids from 2.5 to 7, uh, and then low frequencies uh, from 40 down to 600, either as a bell or a shelf. So you can take care of business with this thing, basically. And it's, again, like, it's just really smooth, really musical. Um, sometimes I like having a graphic EQ. Sometimes I like a parametric EQ. I know they make a point-to-point -point MIDI version of this guy. I forget which company makes it. I'll put in the link when I figure it out. But I'm seriously considering getting that. Um, that alongside the SSL um, uh, G Series bus compressor, that's also like as a little rack unit that's MIDI, but controlling a plugin. That shit's awesome. It really sounds good, and it does exactly what it's supposed to. Um, so, yeah, the EQ in this guy is super sweet. Filters are sweet. Uh, the dynamic sidechain option is also really sweet. Uh, everything about this, I mean, it's a channel strip, right? It's basically saying that what we take for granted nowadays is you'll go, oh, I'm going to go buy a new preamp, and you just buy a preamp by itself, and then what do I want to match it with? Well, what are my options? There's a million of them. Let's pick a Distressor. Let's pick an 1176, LA-2A, Shadow Hills, whatever. Um, there was a time when most of what we needed to make a record was all on the mixing board because every track had the same set of tools. So in this realm, your input gain, um, your EQ section, gate and exciter section, dynamics, filters, it's all represented here really clearly. Um, and uh, yeah, as such, something I've used a lot. And I'll get into it more, but the dynamics on it are actually pretty awesome too. Um, I've had a lot of fun getting to know that little section better on the channel strip itself. So those are my five EQs uh, that are kind of my go-tos right now when I'm not operating with the UAD rig. I'll do a separate video that's like if I'm only using UAD EQs, what my go-tos are. Um, surprisingly, not surprisingly, it's really not the Pultec. Never really liked the sound of the Legacy Series Pultecs or UAD, but we'll get into that in another video. Uh, in the meantime, hit me up, Matt at scottstown.studio. I do have availability through February right now for some projects, probably not full lengths, but EPs, singles, whatever. Um, I can carve out a day or two days and get those turned around for you, and my rates are ever so reasonable um, for a man of my stature and good look. So hit me up. Uh, be well. Be nice to each other. Give your mom or someone you look up to a call and tell them you're thinking of them. Uh, we'll be out of January soon. Brighter days ahead. Peace.